Hey gamers, today we're looking at Belfort and it's two expansions. Let's check it out. A little bit of setup, a lot of glare, but I'll show you everything in detail though. First thing you're going to do is choose some random guilds. Uh, the game comes with several guilds. You're only putting five out on the board here in their respected areas there. Uh, the game lets you know, hey, you should start with maybe two Bs, one I, and two Rs or something like that. But you can shuffle them up and just deal however many it want as you get to play the game more and more. Uh, but the game does make suggestions on what you want to play with at first. Uh, you'll have your little starter marker that starts here. You have your little player board here that tells you how scoring works, how round summaries work, what the cost of, of any of these buildings are, which is excellent, and a spot to put all of your resources. You're going to start with one wood, one stone, one metal, five coins, all 12 of your buildings. You're going to start with three elves and three uh, dwarves. Dwarves are uh, squares. The the elves are circles, and you want to start on the plain Jane one, not the refractor tile here. That's something you can upgrade a dwarf or elf in. But anyway, so that's how you'll start there. You'll get one of these shields, depending on what number player you are. You'll put that number player right there on that shield. Everyone else will get their shields as well. Uh, also, you will have over here is the supply area where you can get wood, stone, metal, and gold. You can also place here uh, to, uh, to get, as you see, it has a circle or a square. You'd have to pay two coins here, depending on the number of players. depends on how many spaces are open. But then you can hire additional elves or dwarves. And then here, what this does is let you switch shields with someone else, meaning you can probably grab first player and so on and so forth. Now, once someone grabs first player, they can flip this over and it's no longer something that can be stolen from another player, you know. So once that first person makes the switch, no one else can steal from first player. Uh, but that's how I can reset the kind of map there. Um, after that, you'll have all of your supplies somewhere in the area. You have these little things you can put out here. This if you run out of goods, which we haven't yet, but you can put one good there. It would equal four of that type of good. Uh, and then my, mine comes with metal coins. I have the uh, special Kickstarter edition too. So nice little clinkity clink that I always love. Uh, but anyway, you can put all your goods over to the side there, and that's basically it. Now, the only other thing that you need to uh, look at, the, these are uh, modular boards here that all fit together. You just fit them together as according to the uh, score track there. Also, over on this end, you're going to deal out as many gnomes as there are players in the game. So you're not going to be using all the gnomes in the game unless you're playing with five players. You have your calendar marker, which starts right there. You have your uh, building deck. Everyone gets five cards. They discard two, so everyone will start with three of these building cards. There are various buildings that you can build around the area. You can find them by, you know, basically by their look, but also by their emblem, which is all on the board here. So, for instance, for gardens, there's gardens here, here, here. There's one in each district. And there's as many buildings as there are places to build on the player board. So you'll deal out three over to the side, and then you are ready to go. This game is very, very simple. It tells you what to do right here. First thing, you're going to move the calendar marker one space, which we did. We started off by moving it. Then it comes to the worker placement stage. And this is basic, simple worker placement. Where can you place? You can place anywhere in any one of these guilds, but each guild shows a little coin symbol, which means you're going to have to pay one coin when you place either, and it's a circle or a square, whether you place an elf or dwarf there, you're going to have to pay one coin at that guild. Now, you don't get the actions or resources or benefits immediately. You have to wait till you place all your workers. But at any time, once you place a worker, if you want to, you can go ahead and kind of pass the rest of your turn and move up here into the supply range and put as many elves, dwarves, or combinations that you want to get these resources. Again, you'll get them later on after the collection phase, but first you're just putting them out. Here is just an all way. You cannot block any players. So for instance, maybe I want to put all three of my dwarfs, or you know, maybe I want to put a dwarf here, uh, an elf there, dwarf here, and maybe another elf there, and then an elf and a dwarf there. So at the end of the round, I'll get one wood, one stone, one metal, and one coin. Now, if I ever had the majority of any of these, so for instance, let's say that I had two dwarves here and white had one. Well, I would actually get a bonus of that good. If I was the only one here, I'd get a bonus there too. Uh, if it's a tie, so let's say it was a tie, then no one would win, even if I had an upgraded worker. These upgraded workers get two resources for one worker, but even if there was an upgraded worker here, he does not trump the number of tokens on the board. But anyone who gets has the most on any of these, even coins, gets a bonus one to their list. And that's kind of how workers get, but that's after we're still collecting. So everyone's going to be collecting 
and putting their workers out. And then once everyone is done, they've all passed, they've gotten all their resources, or maybe they put their people out. There are even certain cards that you can get on your own player board that you can play on your own cards as well during the game. And then after that, it goes to the collection phase. And this is where you're collecting on the benefits, the resources you're getting from one of the guilds here. This is also where you're going to start getting all the benefits here. And even, you know, you'll get an extra dwarf or elf when if you play it over here. You can also be switching out the sh uh, shields there. Once all that's done, now right here it says, hey, you collect income. On a lot of those buildings over in the corner, you'll see a little coin emblem. The end doesn't have it, but these two, these three over here do. The banks and everything do. So I would get as much money as there are coins on the side of my uh, buildings there. And then after that, it says, ah, now you got to pay your taxes. What does this mean? Well, on the board are little coins written. And the further up you go, the more coins you have to pay. Now, you must pay the coins first. If you don't have the coins, then you can start losing victory points. It's very important to no notate there. But you have to pay the coins if you have them. And as you see, the coins just grab up in value the further along you move up this um, uh, track here. Now, uh, after that is done, once you have paid taxes, collect income, then you're going to go over to actions. And actions can be any one of these actions in any order you want. You can build walls, property, or guilds. Meaning if your guy is on a guild, you may pay the resources. The resources are always the same. Wood, stone, and two metal of each. That's for any of these guilds here. Once you place it, uh, you may place one of your little houses here on that little area. Now what does this do? Well, what it does is from now on, when you go here, you don't have to pay the coin. But also, if another player were to go there, then they would have to give me one coin, okay? Because that's my guild, basically, I built there for them. Uh, so that's how guilds work. Now, also, if you're building, like I said, any of these spots, so if I build a library, I can put my guy on any one of the libraries wherever I want. So maybe I want to place it there. And then I'd place this card down here next to me that I could use for a worker placement. Uh, spot on the next round. Uh, in addition to that, uh, you have you can uh, build walls. Anytime you can build a wall, as you see walls here, say three wood and three stone. And you can build in any of the gray areas around the board as long as there are spots to build walls. Now you're only doing one of these actions each uh, per turn. But you can also visit the trading post. The trading post is over here. At the bottom here it tells you you can sell either or and you can buy either or now you can do one of each of these actions or just one of the action maybe i just want to sell this round and then my next turn i'll go around and i'll buy something in the next round or i'll buy it again the third round you can only do it each once or one of the actions either other so they kind of tell you the very self-explanatory there but anyway that's going to the market and the other thing is you can hire one gnome uh, maximum one per round so you can't hire more than one per round but there are special cards that can give you extra gnomes but if you go here, as you see, gnomes give you, uh, you have to pay three coins and you can grab a gnome. What do gnomes do? Well, let me look at some of these building cards you have here because gnomes can do different things. Gnomes can unlock worker placements places. So I can't place anyone here unless I have a gnome. When I do, I can pay one coin, either putting an elf or dwarf there, and I automatically get another gnome. This is a way to get more than one gnome uh, per round. Uh, what this one does, once I unlock it, I just put a gnome here and it automatically upgrades one of my elves. That's what it does. So it's not a worker placement place, but I need a gnome. This one is optional. I would get this reward, which is basically grab two cards from the deck and then discard two either from my hand or the two that I got. But if I had a gnome, I could get a plus one in my hand. So I could grab three cards and only get rid of two. Now you can only have a maximum of five building cards in your hand. If you have more than that, you have to discard. Also in the game, one of the other actions you can do is you can buy one of these cards. You can buy one of the three that are out like here, or you can buy the top one. It says take your chances there. So those are all the actions you can do. You keep going until everyone is passed on their actions, and then optionally you may go to a scoring round. Scoring rounds are on the third, fifth, and seventh round marked by the X there. Well, how scoring goes is very easy. What you're going to do is you're going to score all the districts, giving five, three, and one spot. This is for four players only, though, so in a three-player game they get nothing. But for each section here, so you're going to Basically, kind of take apart the section and see how many houses are on there. Now, if there's a tie, of course, everyone gets the second place votes, and then you know everyone else gets pushed to third, and so on and so forth. So once you've scored every district in the area, then you're going to see, hey, who has the most elves, dwarves, gnomes, okay? And if it's all ties, then all the players are getting one, one victory point. But maybe you're winning in dwarves, maybe because you opened up a dwarf here, and then you're going to get the three victory points. So once you've scored all that, 
then it would go to the next round where you'd move the calendar over and then do it again. That was after a scoring round. So let's say it was there and we did all the scoring round. Then we move there and go again. You're going to do that for seven rounds here. And basically that's it for the base game. Now I want to take a moment and talk about the expansions that you can get with the game. This one's called the Expansion Expansion. And all it is is you're going to get some special characters. You may get workers associated with those characters there too. And what they do is they give, uh, starting with the last player to the first player, everyone's going to round rob and pick one of these. And then they're going to have a special ability. And they're very self-explanatory, each one is. But if you choose for that round not to place your worker or not to take that special action, you can flip it over you know, by basically forfeiting your action for that round, and then grab one of these expansion cards. And what these do is they're little uh, extra buildings that you can attach to some of the buildings in the game. And they'll tell you where they go to. This one goes to the bank. So if I have a bank, I can get one of these treasures. You can pick the one you want, too. And what you're going to do is you're going to put it over to the side here of the uh, building card, and then when you place a worker there, you're going to pay one coin. And then later on to remove them, you're going to have to pay a wood and a stone. Once you do that, this card slides underneath like so, and it gives you some in-game points here. And all the, the book tells you what each one of these do, but they'll give you points at the end of the game. They also come with new guilds as well. The next expansion is called Her Majesty's Silver Service. It comes with three extra modules that you can put into the game if you want to. First off, it has extra guilds here, but then it has things like the, the Queen. I can't remember what it's called, but you put this at the center of your board. It's a worker space. When you have this, you can move the queen. Now, the queen can move anywhere in any one of the five sections of the board. And when you build in the queen section, you're going to get the bonus that's listed on one of these queen cards. Every round, you are flipping over one of these queen cards and taking the bonus. So this time, whenever I build in a section where the queen is, I will collect two wood. And of course, they're very self-explanatory what each one does. And at the end of every round, you're going to be flipping over another one of these cards. And basically, that's just the queen expansion here. Now, the next one here is Parks and Recs. That's Parks. That's Rex. Ha ha. Now you have to put out their guild if you're going to play with them. And what they do is they randomly start out on the board too. As, and if you're playing with the queen, they cannot be on the queens. They can't be on the same tile. So they have to be on three different districts at all times. They, they may never be on the same district. And what this does is it lets you go ahead and move either parks or Rex to a different area. And what that means is during a scoring round, that is going to score differently. So this will make the uh, scores a little bit more tighter. This one will make it more, you know, more uh, blown apart here. So if I'm winning a certain district, I'm getting five points, I'll get eight points. And second place will only get three. Third place gets nothing. Yet maybe I'm second place here, so instead of getting five points, I'll get five points for being second. And first place will, will only get six. So it'll keep the game a little bit closer. So those are both really cool. And uh, like I said, you can keep moving them around uh, from one district to another. Now, if you ever build in one of the districts where they're at. You may also move them again. Uh, but remember, they can't go in the same area with one another or with the queen. So that's the Parks and Recs module. And then the last one is the key one. You have this key guild here. When you go there, you shuffle this deck. Everyone gets one of these little uh, key cards here. And when you go to the guild, you'll grab another key card and then grab the metal key. And what this does is it will activate all of the key cards in your hand. So I have this one. This says, you are the only player that can build walls. Yay, no one can build walls for that round as long as I have the key. This one says, during the place, worker placement, I can ignore the usual fee for placing on guilds. Yay, I get, I, there's no charge for me this round because now I hold the key. And you can uh, continue holding the key until someone else goes there and grabs the key from you. And of course, they'll get an extra card too. So the more you go, the more powerful you can be, but only if you have the key. It will unlock all of your key cards. You just place them out in front of everyone to see and then you gather them up when they're done. And those are the three expansions that come in the game. Final thoughts, what do you think about the game? Whoa! Again, I have a, I, I made a vow this year that I was not gonna judge a game by art anymore. I wanna look at the gameplay. I've seen this a million times. I liked TMG back in the day, but I was like, this looks like garbage. I don't wanna play it. I don't wanna play it. The artwork looks terrible. And I, shame on me, shame on me. The game is excellent. The first time we play, we just play the base game. The second time we play, we play with the expansions. Um, do you need the expansions? Yes and no. Uh, when we play with the expansions, it was a little overwhelming. I wouldn't suggest you play with all of them together. <laughs> that was a mistake. But we were a little overwhelmed. But at the same time, I kept saying, I see some you know, pathways to victory. I see some strategies here. I see a lot of potential. Now, playing the base game is excellent. If you can just get the base game, that's fine. But 
If you're like me, I, I don't know, but, but both expansions are really nice. And I've never seen anyone do a review of the third expansion. That was really weird that there's so many reviews of this game and the expansion, but the, third, the second expansion, no one has reviewed, you know, really well. So I didn't understand that, but it's a really good expansion for this. And like I said, I think I'll start playing with everything combined because I like all the options. Uh, there's so much strategic things you can do in here, and I kept telling my buddies, like, this is super interesting, is it not? The whole time we kept commenting about how, oh, wow, you could have done this. The whole time we were cleaning up, every time we played, we'd clean up and go, we could have done this, or we could have done that, or why didn't we think about this? Oh, I should have done this move. That's what the game makes you think about. Wow. So it, just, it, it is, in an essence, simple, simple worker placement, but the different strategies you have, the different pathways to victory, and I love that. I love that there are different pathways to victory. You have to follow the same goal over and over again. You have to get X amount of this. You always have to get this. No, this one gives you several. And, and, and the expansion is just basically what the game, uh, what an expansion should do. It expands the game and gives you even more options on how you can win. Really good game, possibly top 100. Uh, we'll find out later on. Anyway, gamers, that's it for now. Until next time, game on.